Well, I understand double O's have a very short life expectancy. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're explaining the ending of No Time to Die. Come on, Bond. Where the hell are you? For this video, we're dissecting the ending of Daniel Craig's final James Bond film and what it means for the future of the franchise. Obviously, there will be spoilers. What did you think of No Time to Die? Let us know in the comments. After almost 60 years and 24 movies, well, 26 if you count the non-Eon titles, you'd think that James Bond would have done it all. The latest Bond film, No Time to Die, honors the classic era while still maintaining the gritty realism of the modern series. It's all brilliantly executed, but doesn't stray too far from what we've seen in the past. That is, until we get to the final act, where the film does something never before portrayed on the big screen. Kill James Bond. Stop him! He's supposed to die! God! Nice work, Homer! Am I proud of you? Well... When you go home tonight, there's gonna be another story on your house. Thank you. No Time to Die builds to a thrilling climax where Bond faces Rami Malek's Lucifer Safin. His name is Safin. And what does he want? Revenge. Although some theorized that Safin would be this incarnation's version of Dr. Julius No, the film never solidifies this. While an original creation overall, Safin's wardrobe, lair, and even some of his dialogue seemingly pay homage to Dr. No. I only gratify your curiosity because you're the one man I've met capable of appreciating what I've done and keeping it to himself. It's fitting that a character with subtle echoes of Bond's first on-screen nemesis would bring about the hero's end. Naturally, Bond foils Safin's plan. Before he's finished off, though, Safin exposes Bond to genetically coded nanobots, meaning he can't go near Madeline and Mathilde without killing them. Bond ends Safin's life and opens the missile silos, setting the stage for the island's destruction. In a typical Bond picture, this would be where our hero pulls off a daring, inexplicable last-minute escape. Instead, Bond has Q patch him into Madeline, letting her know that this will be his last mission and their final conversation. While his time has run out, Bond tells Madeline that she has, quote, all the time in the world. This recurring line, of course, stems from 1969's On Her Majesty's Secret Service and its theme song. In that film, George Lazenby's Bond assures his new wife, Tracy, that they have all the time in the world. There's no hurry, you see. We have all the time in the world. This is tragically inaccurate, as Tracy has died on their wedding day. No Time to Die reverses things, with Bond meeting his end while Madeline lives to die another day. Madeline takes this time to confirm what Bond and the rest of the audience suspected. Mathilde does have Bond's blue eyes, meaning she's his daughter. Bond accepts his fate and, as the title alludes to, finally finds the time to die. The missiles hit, destroying the island, the nanobots, and James. Oh my god, target enough people. And the people become the weapon. So, this might sound like a silly question, but could Bond have survived? In this continuity alone, we've seen James miraculously bounce back after his heart virtually stopped, and after a gunshot sent him plunging into a river. Take the bloody shot! Bond doesn't quite reach superhero or slasher villain levels of invincibility, but he comes close. So you're not dead. That said, we see Bond explode on screen, which is hard to come back from without cheapening the moment. Blofeld tells Bond at one point that Madeline's secret will be the death of you. At first, it sounds like Madeline has done something that'll leave Bond betrayed and heartbroken. While that's not exactly the case, one of Madeline's secrets does connect to Bond's demise. Why would I betray you? We all have our secrets. We just didn't get to yours yet. For five years, Madeline hid Mathilde's existence from James. After meeting his daughter, keeping her safe is all that matters to him. When Safin infects Bond with the nanobots, he doesn't instantly die, but his spirit is broken. Bond always had something that kept him going be it a mission, revenge, the woman he loves, or a martini. Is this really what you want? Living in the shadows, hunting, being hunted, always looking behind you, always alone? I'm not alone. 
Knowing that he can't be with Madeline or Mathilde, Bond has nothing left to live for. Even if Bond had found a way to get off the island, he couldn't go back to retiring in Jamaica knowing he had a daughter out there. Maybe MI6 could have found some sort of remedy eventually. The past isn't dead. By simply being alive, though, Bond was a danger to Madeline and Mathilde. Plus, there could have been other consequences. If we don't do this, there will be nothing left to save. The risks were too high, and with no clear escape anyway, Bond finally stops running. In that sense, Madeline's secret was the death of Bond, but he died content. In the wake of Bond's passing, Ray Fiennes M recites a quote from novelist Jack London, quote, The proper function of man is to live, not to exist. I shall not waste my days in trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. Author Ian Fleming previously used the quote in his book You Only Live Twice. It appears in an obituary for a presumed dead Bond, although he actually survived that brush with death. They told me you were assassinated in Hong Kong. Yes, this is my second life. You only live twice, Mr. Bond. In both this film and the book, the quote epitomizes James Bond. He'll live every day as if it's his last and go out in a blaze of glory. In the final scene, Madeline and Mathilde drive to their new life in Matera, Italy. After years of shielding Mathilde from her father, Madeline prepares to tell her daughter the story of James Bond, guaranteeing his legacy will live on. Life is all about leaving something behind, isn't it? The ending mirrors the opening in more ways than one. Early in the film, we see James and Madeline in Matera. James Bond, licensed to kill, in love with Madeline Swan. Even more significant, the film commences with the iconic gun barrel sequence. The closing shot sees Madeline and Mathilde driving through a tunnel, looking like a bullet traveling through a barrel. Thus, the ending brings the story full circle. Before Kerry Joji Fukunaga came on, Danny Boyle was set to direct No Time to Die, but he left over creative differences. Boyle has stated that his departure was due to a script dispute, not wanting to part ways with screenwriter John Hodge. Didn't go into much detail beyond that, but some sources claim that Boyle was against offing Bond, allegedly calling the idea, quote, ridiculous. Well, we had, we, we had what we call creative differences, which is, um, there's a joke about that, isn't there, that we, we thought we were being creative and they thought different. Whether this is true or not, Craig has been ready to retire as Bond for a while, so we imagine he was in favor of ending his Bond tenure on a dire note. Maybe Craig will make a cheeky cameo in a future Bond picture, but don't expect him to pull a Sean Connery and reprise the role. Who are you? My name is Bond. James Bond. While Craig likely won't return, the end credits clearly state that James Bond will return. James says at one point that 007 is just a number. Lashana Lynch's Nomi takes on the 007 moniker for a period. The world's moved on, Commander Bond. You were double O. Two years. While she lets Bond reclaim it for his final mission, Nomi may be the new 007 now that James is gone. Nomi might not be the last 007 either. Perhaps Mathilde will grow up to be an MI6 agent, inheriting her father's old code number. The ending doesn't say 007 will return, however. It promises James Bond, meaning the next installment in this franchise will likely take place in a new continuity. Either that, or it'll turn out that James survived, but got plastic surgery to look like Tom Hardy or Henry Cavill. I think that would be, that'd be a lot of fun. We'll see. I mean, if, if the opportunity comes my way, then I will definitely jump at it. But... That's up to them. Or maybe they'll pull an Into the Spider-Verse with Craig, Pierce Brosnan, Timothy Dalton, and George Lazenby all meeting up. Eh, maybe just hit the reboot switch. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Reggae Jean Page, Luke Evans, and Idris Elba are just some of the other dream casting choices that have been tossed around. But producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson stated that they're not talking about recasting until 2022. I think that character, everybody would like to see it have, uh, you know, do, do something different with it. Broccoli did confirm, however, that Bond will remain a male character. But she added, quote, I hope that there will be many, many films made with women, for women, by women, about women. 
whatever awaits this franchise. The fact that we're already contemplating replacements proves one thing. Even in death, James Bond will live forever. The internet has decided that you're a frontrunner to be the next James Bond. They all want it to happen. I want this to happen. The betting odds right now are at 5 to 1. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.